fortunately you have an ARIMA routine which is a very generic routine which can be used for estimating AR models, MA models, uh, ARMA models, ARIMA models, even seasonal ARIMA models and many you know different types of models. Then why did not I start off with that? As I said you should know that there exist specialized routines for estimating AR models which use different set of algorithms. The ARIMA model, uh, the, sorry the ARIMA routine in R uses maximum likelihood estimation okay, which are computationally intensive. So, if you have a large data set you may not want to really straight away use ARIMA and MLEs are known to be notorious for they are kind of notorious when it comes to computational complexities and so on. So, it may be good idea if you know that you are using AR models to stick to your AR routine and get your work done because two advantages. One, the algorithms that are used in this are fairly simple, you will have Walker least squares and so on, you have computationally efficient ways of calculating them and <coughs> also that it gives you unique estimates. Whereas, ARIMA uses an MLE and any maximum likelihood estimation algorithm 99.9% .9 of them are all non-linear least squares problems and therefore, you will be uh, given only local optimum. It I think it uses some kind of a uh, uh, Gauss-Newton algorithm or a Fisher scoring algorithm. So, the point is that you get unique estimates and algorithms are simple in AR. So, very quickly let us look at uh, the ARIMA here again of course, it is asking which one. We will we'll stick to this because the ARIMA that comes with TSA has some advantages I am not going to discuss that. At the moment it suffices to know again we have to supply for example, the series of course and the orders and then again specify D mean and there is one option that I would like to draw your attention to which is transform dot PARS okay. This transform dot parameters essentially I do not know uh, how well you can read. It says if true that means it is a logical variable the AR parameters are transformed to give you stationarity and I have to go and figure out as to what it does to give you stationarity there. Essentially it is forcing some kind of stability on the model. It is uh, it, it pulls back if it finds an AR model in the uh, outside the unit circle it kind of pulls back somehow and forces it. But let us not worry about it now, but I just wanted to point that out. So, let us quickly fit an ARMA 11 model and I am going to fit an ARMA uh, as I said 1 1 because I do not have any information and I fit it and D mean has said to be true that means it will also estimate either the alpha or the mu. Now, the nice thing about using this routine is it the, the way unfortunately it is not these are things are not structured very well because it is an open source software or whatever I hope our developers are hearing us. But uh, the way the ARIMA model is reported is a lot better than the way an AR model is reported and that is why even though it is using a maximum likelihood algorithm I would prefer this for example to do the diagnosis for. So, for example, here I can ask uh, for the model and it straight away calculates the standard errors for me right because then I can use this valuable time to post another message on Facebook. Uh, look at how much time I wasted in computing all the standard errors and so on right? because that is the objective at the end of the day. Maximize time on uh, social media. So, <coughs> anyway you had a question? Ah, sorry. So, the order 101 there it is a very secret thing. Anyway, so, you should be able to guess now those are the orders for the AR the integrating effect if there is one and then the, and a, the MA order anyway, but thanks for bringing that up. So, we since we are fitting ARMA 11 we are saying that and, and uh, there is no integrating effect I believe uh, in the model in the series sorry and uh, the, and the orders are you now uh, values are self explanatory ok. So, if you are fitting ARMA 2 1 you would be supplying 2 comma 0 comma 1. So, the C there is uh, uh, allowing you to pass on a vector because you know C in R actually works uh, gives you a vector oh, ok. So, let us quickly look at this model here it reports the estimates and it also gives me this intercept term and then it also gives me standard errors 
but we have already been told by someone that we should not look at the standard errors until and unless we are convinced that the residual survive. If we do not know who said it, but someone said it. So, let us actually go back and look at the residuals. Now, one uh, there is exists one routine called TSDIAG, TS basically diagnostics for your time series model and you can pass on this model object that you have estimated to that and it generates the required uh, diagnostics for you. So, for example, here I have estimated ARMA11 mod and I want to do a diagnosis of that model. So, it generates this plot. Let me quickly explain what this plot is showing you. The top plot is showing what is known as a standardized residuals. So, it is just standardized with respect to something, do not worry, it is just showing residuals for you in a standardized form. Now, obviously, by looking at the residuals, you say, yeah, exactly, I got my model. You cannot say that, right? You cannot jump with joy just like it. You have to look at the second plot, which is showing you the ACF, right? What is the ACF telling me? Are the residuals, do they pass the whiteness test or not? No. Gerbert, where? Sorry? No, there are dashed lines. Are you able to see the red dashed lines there? You are able to see? Maybe if you had gone for shopping in the cloth store, you would be able to see all of them. <laughs> because a plot may be not so visible. You are very, very careful when we go for shopping. So, there are these red lines, which are the significance bands. And all the estimates are there within that significance band, correct? And that is a way of, we will understand truly what is the meaning of the significance bands later on. But as of now, the way to use them is if they, all the estimates are within that band, then we conclude that none of the ACF estimates at non-zero lags is significant. Then there is a bottom plot which has got to do with what I said earlier, box leung pierce test. But I am going to skip that for now. When we talk about the box leung pierce test, you will understand what that plot is generating. But that is also telling me that the model is actually, uh, you know, the residuals are white. It passes the whiteness test, the residuals pass the whiteness test. Okay. So, what the, uh, the conclusion is now, this ARMA11 model is satisfactory with respect to residual analysis. So, the next checkup is whether it has overeaten or it has been overtrained. And that is where we look at the standard errors and clearly it tells us that the parameter estimates, namely the D1 and C1 hats are significant because the errors are small. I mean, you can construct the confidence region. But what does the, what does it say about the intercept term? The, the estimate is given 0 0.2469 and error is also given 0 0.2145. Error is as big almost as the estimate. So, what does it tell us about the estimate? Uh, uh, if I were to uh, look at this kind of a hypothesis, is that mu or alpha? Says that Null hypothesis hold. I mean, I fail to reject the null hypothesis, right? Because again, you can apply the same principle. You construct the confidence region; it should not contain a zero. But it does. Don't tell me that it, it, so it, it definitely contains it. There is nothing it definitely will contain or not. That's all. Beyond that, it is all only intensity of how you say it. Okay, but unfortunately, there is no accounting for that in statistics. You can say it very lightly. In, in a sleepy manner, it does not matter. It says the truth is truth. Okay. So, the point is now, strictly speaking, I should go back and also now uh, undo this and say I do not want to estimate the mean. So, we should do that and that is the most important step. So, we say do not be mean. Okay. Oops, sorry. Uh, what happened? D mean. Let us see here. I think maybe, ah, include dot mean, right. So, false, okay. So, in this, unfortunately, it is not d mean, it is include dot mean. So, you can see that there are different things. And now, when you ask for the ARMA11 model, it says, you have asked me not to estimate, I have estimated. So, now, this is satisfactory. Of course, the complete test, the mod, uh, test for model is completed only 
when we use a cross validation set and uh, do the prediction, but we will not go into that at the moment. So, the last thing that we want to answer now, what is that? Ah, so, I have this model of the cell phone, the other model of the cell phone, both seem to be doing the same thing, there are some considerations and so on, which one should I pick, right. So, as I said, one of the ways, please remember that, one of the ways for uh, that is uh, or the methods that is used in model selection. Model selection still remains one of the hot topics in uh, modeling, not just time series modeling everywhere as to which model to pick even in fashion industry that is an issue. Anyway, so <laughs> seriously, models can become outdated also. <laughs> anyway, so let us actually ask for the, in fact, I do not have to supply AIC here. I can ask for the Akai K information criterion what is the value that has come about for this model and it automatically computes that as a part of model estimation. This is the value that I get. This absolute value does not mean much to me. What matters is which has lower AIC, that is the one and you pick the model that has a lower AIC. I am not explaining what is AIC at the moment, but you pick the one that has the lower AIC, oops sorry, yeah uh, something has happened. Okay. Unfortunately, I think yeah, I think uh, there is a problem with the AAC. I will look into it, but ideally, it should give me <coughs> the AAC calculated in the same way. Ah, okay. So what we shall do is, in fact, I understand what the issue is. Let's actually use the same ARIMA routine to estimate the AR model as well, so that things are now consistent everything whatever methods are being used are the same. So, we just go through this additional step we say order is C500 because we want to estimate only an AR model and also we will ask the mean estimation to be taken out, oops sorry something else. What is it? Attribute. Is something wrong? Okay. Do you notice any error? Hmm? Then, ah, earlier what was the problem? Oh, sorry. I think uh, I need to stop then. <laughs> really, sorry. Thank you for telling me that. So, error <laughs> was on my side. All right. So, now we can ask for the AIC. So, let us clear. Yes, there is no error. <laughs> this is the AIC for the ARMA 11 and this is the AIC for AR5. And as I said, you pick the one that is actually has a lower AIC. That is the theory. What the AIC does is it actually looks at the trade off between the model complexity that is how many parameters you have included in your model versus how well it has explained the series in terms of minimizing the sum square prediction error. Okay. So, <clears throat> the AR5 has more parameters yes, so it may have done uh, maybe some good job of predicting the series. ARMA11 has only two parameters in it, it also has succeeded in doing a uh, going uh, giving a good fit to your series. But when you look at the trade off it says it, this is better, ARMA 1 1 is better. So, our winner I do not have a, a sound for it, but our winner is this, all right. Now time to reveal what was the process that I have used to simulate this and let us uh, okay. So, let us do it here. So, this is the model that I have used. I have used an ARMA 1 1. So, do not tell me I back, I mean nowhere in our systematic procedure we have used that knowledge. If you had given me the series and uh, if you had made me blind to the way it was generated, we would have still followed the same procedure. Okay. But by following a systematic procedure, at least in theory we have shown if the underlying process is ARMA, we have managed to pick that. 
in reality the processes are going to be more than arma you have varmas you have so many things so right they are not going to be armas for you but this kind of a uh, conviction is necessary for anyone to uh, demonstrate that yes this procedure actually does pick the right model when the truth is that again that is a standard procedure that's used everywhere so this is the uh, also this way to simulate an arima series you can see i specify the model as a list i specify the coefficients the only caution is when you specify the coefficients it is asking you to express give you minus give it minus d1 minus d2 and so on be careful so it expects you to give the ar coefficients when you write it as vk equals something the ma coefficients are the same and i said order is c101 which means i don't want to have any integrating effect and n is simply the number of observations there are other options in this arima.sim for example here it automatically generates the ek internally generates the ek through r norm and then solves uh, the difference equation you can externally supply you can say rand you uh, uh, there is an option here when you pull up the help on arima.sim i don't know how well you can see but it shows here rand.gen you can supply Uh, by default it's r norm you can use uniform white noise any other white noise if you want and or else you can supply a function for example to generate the innovations and then there is something called n dot start okay now if you go down the help it would say n dot start is nothing but the burn in period comes in to picture remember we have shown in the and you have seen that the ar process is not stationary per se it is only asymptotically stationary if you let it settle down then it becomes stationary so what do you mean by let it settle down how long should you allow it to settle down that's called the burn in period and that is what this n dot start is one doesn't have to specify fortunately it automatically kind of figures out how long it takes so although we are asking for 500 observations therefore it is generating more than 500 observations and throwing away the first and then giving the rest to you so that you are working with a stationary series that is that's something that uh, one can keep in mind now that it is 6 o'clock we'll wind up